Thank you so much. Um, hello to everyone. And thank you for the continuous interest to the topic. Um, as you know, Russian war in Ukraine has made a lot of changes to the global economy. It affected volumes and structure, production and trade, prices, logistics, supply chain, not only in Ukraine, but in many other countries directly or indirectly, regardless their partnership with Ukraine. So we are going to cover all those uh, questions today. I also have included on this first slide some recent photos showing Russian terror to the grain supply chain. On the right uh, is the Liberia, uh, Liberia flag merchant vessel uh, loaded with Ukrainian grain for Egypt, which was hit by Russian missiles a few days ago in the Black Sea after it left Ukrainian territorial water. And in the left uh, lower corner is a column of trucks transporting grain in Sumer region in Ukraine. So thousands of people were left without grain um, that they were waiting for due to Russian terror. And this happens every day, unfortunately. So let's start with the latest USDA was the report that has been released last week. Um, during the last decade, world production and consumption of grain was pretty tight. Uh, but since the beginning of the Russian war in Ukraine, the gap between world production and consumption started to increase uh, to, to, uh, from 10 to 15 million tons. One of the reasons is significant loss of Ukrainian grain production. Although on the global scale, it looks like not much, but for some small countries like Georgia, Armenia, this amount is several times more of their yearly needs. Uh, unfortunately, on the world scale, there is no available uh, uh, production capacity to fill out this gap, especially this year, uh, when firstly the great gray drought was in Europe in the summer and now the terrible flood that is happening in Poland, Romania, uh, the Czech Republic and Austria. So to cover this difference, world need to trade more and use ending stocks. World population grows, as we know, its demand grows and stocks decrease. And another question, where are those ending stocks? Uh, stored, um, China, Russia, Europe, can import-dependent de countries really rely on those partners. Ending stocks are getting lower and lower, and as you see, focus for 24-25 marketing year is uh, 768 million tons, uh, from which 60%, around 60% are located in China. Uh, there is an expectation that production is uh, going to grow, but the consumption will grow even more. So world will still have shortage on the grain uh, uh, on the grain market, approximately 14 million tons, which could be easy covered if Ukraine was not under the war. The major gap between uh, uh, the major gap between uh, production and consumption on a grain market is observed on, uh, for wheat, although it's slightly shrinking. Um, global consumption is raised to a record um, 805 million tons, mainly on higher feed and a residual use for Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and a few other countries. Ukraine in particular is trying to renew their livestock production, uh, which was lost in the full-scale invasion. Uh, projected 24-25 global ending stocks are lower to 257 million tons, the lowest since 2015-16 marketing year. The September wheat production forecast of USDA for 24-25 marketing year is more pessimistic compared to previous month's report. It is lowered uh, by 1.4 million tons to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, 796.9 million, but remains a record as a reduction in European Union due to extreme weather condition is only partially offset by higher production uh, expected in Australia and Ukraine. Several 
other top producers like China, India, the US, Canada have better harvest this year compared to the previous year. And Russia will have much lower wheat production this year due to the frozen crops in the spring. And if Ukraine will continue counterattack deeper on Russian territory, this amount can be even less for Russia. Um, changes in the production consequently leads to the changes in export. Russia, Europe, and Ukraine can decrease their export together by 17.5 million tons compared to previous year. It will partially compensate it uh, by Australia, the US, and Argentina, but still we will observe decline in the total global wheat export. Uh, my major concern is still the share of Russia on the global wheat market. Before the war, Russian share was around 16% equal to European Union. And the USA, Australia, Ukraine had bigger shares, so market was more competitive then. In 23-24, a share of Russia on the global wheat market increased to over 25%. This increased Russian pressure on the importers in terms of food security, prices provoking food inflation. They even can create artificial shortage on the market, introducing additional export quotas and duties. Next marketing year, uh, we expect some lowering of the Russian share on the wheat market. At the same time, Ukrainian share decreased from 9% in 21-22 marketing year to 6.9%. I also would like to draw your attention to Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, since the beginning of the war in Ukraine, significantly decreased their wheat export uh, to Russia, which would usually re-export it and started export more to the world market, in particular to China and Europe. If in 21-22 marketing year, Kazakhstan exported only 28,000 tons of wheat to China, in 23-24 marketing year, they export, exported 623,000 tons of wheat to China. At the same time, Kazakhstan reduced their export to great Russian partner Iran, from 760,000 tons to only 13,000 tons, respectively. So the, my message is that Kazakhstan is moving out from the Russian influence, has great production potential, and is ready to be more active player on the global grain markets. In 24-25 marketing year, we expect lower corn production based on cut to the European Union, Serbia, uh, Russia, Romania, Hungary, uh, with the extreme heat and dryness in uh, Southern Europe and the Southern and North Caucasus districts of Russia during the months of July, which really reduced yield prospects. This partially equalizes the world production and consumption of corn and will reflect in the corn export decline. Um, traditionally, we know that uh, US, China, and Brazil are top producer of corn. We can observe actually significant uh, increase, gradual increase of corn production in China and Brazil. The biggest decrease in production is of course in Ukraine, over 35% uh, compared to the pre-war level and over 12% 12, 12 compared to the previous year. Russian corn production getting even lower this year compared to the pre-war level, uh, which will lead to the replacement of Russia by Canada in the 10th position. So despite the uh, reduction in corn production, Ukraine is still keeping a leading export position, although its share is shrinking. In 23-24 marketing year, Ukraine exported more due to unexpectedly higher yields last year and obviously high beginning stocks that left from previous year. Uh, in 24-25 marketing year, Ukraine will uh, definitely export less due to lower production, 
Moreover, um, Ukrainian forecast is much lower than USDA projection, and we will talk about this on uh, later slides. So, as we can see, despite the war, Ukraine is still keeping leading position in agricultural export. In 24-25 marketing year, Ukraine will continue to be first on sunflower oil and sunflower meal export. We will keep a third place for rape seeds export, fourth for corn, fifth for barley, and sixth for wheat. Um, the only what is going to change is sunflower seeds export. We will decline to the fifth place due to higher processing uh, for sunflower oil, which is better for Ukraine in terms of selling higher value added products. And uh, in soybean export, Ukraine will move up one position also to fifth place. Uh, this is with the assumption that export logistics will not be interrupted, of course. Mm -hmm. So, as you understand, Ukraine is a top exporter. It's still a top exporter on many agricultural markets. And that is why keeping Ukrainian agriculture moving is extremely important for the world in terms of food security. But not only for the world. Agricultural export is getting more and more important source of revenue for Ukrainian budget. Although agricultural export decreased in dollars amount, its decline is not as steep as in other industries. As a result, the share of agricultural export in the total export of Ukraine increased to 61% in 2023 compared to 41% in 2021, and as for now, it's already 33%. And so far, 27% of total export is grain export. So despite being a world bread basket and serving as a guarantor of global food security, Ukraine faces internal food insecurity issues. One of the reasons is high food inflation. Since the beginning of the war, consumer price index in Ukraine increased by 39.5%. At the same time, by August 24, food in average became 42.4% more expensive compared to pre-war level in January 2022, making food less affordable for many Ukrainians. In particular, bread became more expensive by 43%. That is why, in average, more than 20% of Ukrainians now afford to save on food. The most critical situation occurs uh, in region, uh, regions close to frontline and occupied territories where people are facing severe food insecurity due to problems with logistics, insufficient income, unemployment, and high prices. As a result, global food security index for Ukraine declined from rank 58 to 71 below even countries where Ukraine would traditionally export food, like Algeria, Indonesia, or Tunisia. In 2022, as you know, Ukraine occupied at around 32% of Ukrainian, uh, Russia occupied, I'm sorry, around 32% of Ukrainian territory, including over 10.5 million of arable land. As a result of the success actions of Ukrainian army in 2022 and 23, the territories of Kiev, Zhytomyr, Mykolaiv, and Sumy region were liberated. Um, as of, uh, of the beginning of 2024, the area of the territories of Ukraine suitable for conducting economic activities amounted to 48 million hectares. Um, it increased by 16.8% compared to 2022 and by 2.8% compared to 2023 due to the occupation of part of Kharkiv um, here and Kherson regions. Uh, however, not all areas that liberated can be suitable for agricultural production right away. There is a lot of physical damages, chemical pollutions and mines. 
Um, additional remediation measures must be carried uh, out after the mining to make soil suitable again for agriculture. But it takes a lot of time, um, inputs, uh, and labor to return the fertility um, of soil. So as a result of territory loss, annual crop acreage declined to over 30%. If in 2021, Ukraine harvested almost 16 million hectare, uh, hectares of grain and legumes, in 2023, we were able to harvest only uh, uh, 10.8 uh, million hectares. In 2024, Ukraine planted additional 131,000 hectares of grain crops and 543,000 hectares more of oil seed crops than in previous year. At the same time, we can observe changes in crop structure during the war. Ukrainian farmers increased wheat crops for 5% in 2024 compared to the previous year. However, it is still 31% less to the pre-war level. It is also less than in 2022. Due to low or no profitability of grain crops, farmers continue switching to oil crops, especially soybeans. The harvesting campaign is ongoing. So far, Ukraine finished uh, harvesting barley, wheat, uh, peas, and rapeseeds. Around 30% of sunflower and uh, soybeans are harvested, and we just started harvesting corn. Hopefully, we will be able to harvest it before winter. And uh, totally, as for now, over two thirds of all planted crops are harvested. As it is expected, yields are much lower compared to the previous year, which had extremely favorable weather condition and, of course, lower uh, compared to the pre-war level. But for some grain crops like wheat and barley, yield are better this year compared to 2022 when the war just started, which shows that farmers improved their technology adjusting to the current situation. Corn yields are very low this year, and this explains why we have so low estimated production level, which you will see on the next slide. Uh, Ukrainian farmers are very resilient and they try to produce as much as they can. And I have included a few more photos for you. The one on the top uh, is from Dnipropetrovsk region near Krivirikh. Uh, farmers are trying to save grain after Russian missile attack and all neighboring farmers who have combines and tractors came um, to burning field to help harvesting at least what is possible. And another picture on the bottom is actually from yesterday. Uh, Russian missile, uh, missiles hit and destroyed the elevator in uh, Hluchiv in Sumer region loaded with approximately 40,000 uh, tons of grain. So this is another example of how Russia cares about global food security. So why are yields getting lower in Ukraine? One of the reasons are inputs. Uh, this year, farmers again decreased application of fertilizers. In 2024, the fertilizer application rates in Ukraine in average was lower by 40% compared to 2021 and 5% less than in 2023. Taking into consideration uh, that plants extract from soil more nutrients that farmers put back, Yields will continue to decline, especially for sunflower crops. However, the reduction in application rates was not uniform across the country. While uh, large producers maintained their rates, smaller ones made significant cuts, reducing their application rates by 10-15% compared to 2023. Yeah. Lower yields are reflected in lower production volume, which is not necessarily compensated by crop area increase. So far, Ukraine harvested 30 million tons of grain and 8.2 million tons of oil seeds. 
Uh, we harvested almost 22 million tons of wheat, uh, which is a little bit more than last year and more than in 2022. We harvested almost five and a half million tons of barley, which is at least a half of million uh, tons more than was expected. But, but as, as you can see, our expectations for corn harvest are very, very low. 4 million tons, even less than USDA forecast, and almost 8 million uh, tons less than in previous season. Ukrainian experts uh, decreased estimates for corn due to extreme heat and drought that occurred in July. And also there is a big chance that farmers again will not be able to finish harvesting on time before snow due to shortage of fuel, electricity and labor. So Ukraine expects only 23.4 million tons of corn to be harvested this year. Uh, at the beginning, we also had very ambitious expectations uh, regarding soybeans around 5.2 million tons, but after the beginning of the harvesting, we found that yields are significantly lower than we expected, which caused a uh, reduction uh, in estimated amount to 4.8 million tons. Ukraine harvested 3.4 million tons of rapeseeds, which is also much lower than we expected. Um, the sunflower for, uh, harvest focus is in line with last year's level, but may be adjusted as the harvest progresses. A decrease in yields leads to a decrease in export estimates. Ukrainian experts expect just 18.5 million tons to be exported of corn in 24-25 marketing year, which is 11 million tons less than last marketing year. The focus of the USDA is more optimistic. Um, in previous season, we had such high export level due to very high beginning stocks. Um, as you remember from previous slide, we produced 31 million tons of corn and exported 29.4 million tons, uh, while our domestic uh, consumption of corn is around four and a half million tons. Um, this year, we don't have such large beginning stocks and production is expected to be much lower. So that's why our export uh, expectations are also lower. We're also going to have much lower wheat export compared to the previous year, 5 million tons less. Although uh, uh, USDA um, kind of more optimistic, uh, this means that actually USDA estimated gap between world production and consumption can be even bigger unless some other countries will receive higher yields than they expect. Um, at the same time, uh, also uh, Russian experts and USDA decreased Russian wheat and corn harvest estimates. Russia can always add additional harvest from Ukrainian occupied areas. For example, it is known that uh, they already harvested 1.7 million tons of grain and 760,000 tons of sunflower seeds from the Parisian region. They also expect to harvest 1.2 million tons of grain from occupied Kherson region. In the Netsk region, it's harvested so far 480,000 tons of, uh, of grain and 520,000 tons from Lugansk region and one and a half million tons from Crimea. So totally is around 4.7 million tons of grains that Russia already harvested on Ukrainian territories and might add this to their um, uh, harvest volume. Um, Ukraine started sowing winter crops for 2025 harvest. In general, it is expected to plant 250,000 hectares more than last year. Winter wheat crops can be increased for more than 100,000 hectares compared to 2023. It is surprising that um, forecast for winter barley is 50% higher than was planted last year, but we are returning some territories to cultivation. And if farmers were not able to have spring crops, they are planting now winter crops. Um, at the same time, we observe gradual reduction in winter rapeseed planting 
area. So let's return to export. Um, totally in 23-24 marketing year, and this is final uh, data after uh, marketing year was uh, completed, um, Ukraine exported almost 51 million tons of grain and uh, flour, uh, which is just 1.5 million tons more than in previous marketing year. The major increase is due to higher wheat export. Uh, if we compare export of uh, August in 2024 to August in 2023, um, uh, in this year it's much higher, um, especially uh, for wheat and barley. Uh, new harvest is already uh, on the market and farmers and tra traders are trying to empty storages and sell as much as they can while the prices are really good for Ukraine. And we will talk about uh, prices a little bit later. Um, regarding oil seeds and byproducts, Ukrainian export is higher than even before the war. Um, we exceeded pre-war level for sunflower oil export by 1 million tons, uh, but we uh, exported much less of sunflower seeds, which actually good for Ukrainian economy. Um, since July, a wheat export exceeds corn export. This happened for the first time last year in August and September when new harvest, new wheat harvest came to market and corn stocks uh, were getting low. This year, the situation happened earlier. Many far farmers, due to um, shortage of storage, uh, storages and high risk, more often sell their grain right from the field uh, because there is as you saw from those pictures, there is no guarantee that another missile strike will not hit the elevators. Totally for two and a half years of the war, uh, Ukraine exported over 150 million tons of grain, including 63 million tons of corn and 39 million tons of wheat and almost 13 million tons of sunflower oil. Extremely important issue in terms of global uh, food security is uninterrupted export logistics uh, from Ukraine. Before the war, uh, we 90% uh, uh, of Ukrainian egg export was going through Black Sea ports. At the beginning of the war, when all Ukrainian ports were blocked by Russia, many import-dependent countries were in high risk of food crisis. Uh, and Ukraine started to search uh, together with uh, United Nations and other countries for alternative roads, um, including through land borders and small Danube river ports. Uh, since Russia's withdrawal from the United Nations uh, Grain Initiative and opening of the Ukrainian Humanitarian Grain Corridor, exports from Black Sea ports increased by 30%. Uh, we are still behind of our export potential, but remember only three big Odessa ports are operating. The rest remain blocked or occupied. Uh, demand for the new Priva ports decreased because of more expensive logistics compared to Black Sea ports. Another reason is that Romania decreased purchase of Ukrainian grain. Uh, the storages in Constanza port a full and uh, European new harvest is priority for export. Uh, we also can see increase in shipment of grain via trucks. Polish farmers finally stopped blocking Ukrainian export since prices for Ukrainian grain increased. So, as I mentioned, Antonina, sorry, I just had a question come in that might be good to answer now. Okay. In the chat, um, okay. there has been a large increase in soy exports in the last couple of years. Is that due to added production via increased growing area, or is there additional incentive to have increased soy exports? Uh, that is, uh, first of all, because increased growing area. Okay. And of course, if we grow more, we do not, our domestic consumption is still the same, even lower, uh, because uh, we lost livestock, many people left country. So our domestic consumption is lower. So of course, everything what we produce, we try to export 
uh, I mean, additional production uh, we try to export. All right, thanks. So let's return to export. As I mentioned, uh, Romania significantly decreased um, import of Ukrainian grain. Mostly all this grain was used uh, for the export. And now the main buyer of grain uh, from Ukraine is Spain. Spain doubled its grain for chives from Ukraine in 23-24 uh, compared to a uh, previous marketing year. And now it's five times more, um, almost 10 million tons more uh, compared to uh, the uh, pre-war uh, season. Egypt increased their grain import from Ukraine and returned to their pre-war position. Egypt is buying less from Russia now, and maybe this is just coincidence or my thought that vessel with grain for Egypt from Ukraine was hit by Russian missiles. Um, it was not a coincidence. Or maybe not, who knows. Um, also, Indonesia is returning to the Ukrainian market after switching to a uh, Russian market. The same is Pakistan. Um, at the same time, Turkey and many European countries um, uh, now buying much less from Ukraine or even no more. Um, as you know, Europe opened their borders for Ukrainian grain when it was needed. Now more and more grains are shipped through Black Sea ports to other countries in Asia and Africa. However, export logistics is very, very fragile as there is no guarantee that tomorrow Russia will not make another missile attack on Ukrainian Black Sea ports infrastructure or vessels carrying grain. Um, there are also many changes in Ukrainian export geography on the oil seed and by product markets. In 2022-23, Romania entered the market for chives 5.3 uh, million tons of oil seed and uh, processed products, and also Turkey uh, tripled their purchase, mainly offsetting purchase cut by China, China and India. In 23-24 marketing year, both Romania and Turkey decreased their purchase by half. Instead, uh, Germany almost tripled their purchase compared to the pre-war level. Egypt increased uh, their purchase of oil seeds and byproducts by 2 million tons compared to the pre-war level. Uh, Netherlands and Belgium are again on Ukrainian uh, oil market. The situation, as you can see on this market, is very fluctuating as Ukraine is increasing production and export of oil seeds and byproducts and searching for a new trading partners. I have for you updated balances of uh, supply and demand for grain and oil seeds in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, you can study them in more detail later if you wish. Uh, my slides are available for you. I just would like to point on significant decrease in export, uh, in export trend due to lower production and higher ending stocks estimates in 23-25 marketing year. Similar trends, but uh, on much uh, smaller scale, are observed in um, the oil seeds market. Our ending stocks are going to be uh, a bit higher uh, than in previous year, but it is 20 times less than initial stocks in 22-23 marketing year where uh, Black Sea ports were blocked. Um, now, let's take a quick look on world prices. Last week, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian million wheat uh, was offered for 20, uh, $227, American for 229 very close. Uh, since the end of September, prices for wheat started to grow. And there are several reasons for this. First of all, high activity on speculative uh, sales. Uh, reduced um, USDA uh, was the forecast for wheat harvest in European Union, uh, decrease in grain offer from Black Sea region and others. 
Um, also, also market immediately reacted on missile attack on grain vessel um, in the Black Sea. Uh, December wheat futures rose by 2.2% next morning after the attack. Uh, price for Ukrainian uh, feed wheat uh, has been higher than uh, Russian and uh, also, uh, I'm sorry, uh, prices for Ukrainian million wheat uh, has been higher than Russian and American since July, uh, which is good for Ukrainian farmers in terms of uh, possible uh, profitability increase. But on a feed uh, uh, with market Ukrainian price is lower than, for example, Russian price. Um, on the feed grain markets, uh, corn is also more expensive. Ukrainian corn is also more expensive than an Argentinian and American, um, 206 against 194 and 193. But we expect that corn prices may drop slightly as more new corn crops enters the market. However, uh, this is currently unlikely due to the dry weather, which creates difficulties with the transportation of grain in the Amazon uh, basin, in particular from Brazil. Um, on the barley market, Prices uh, for Ukraine is in the level with Russia, while French and Australian barley are 40 and $45 more expensive, respectively. Um, here is a dynamic of prices on oil seeds and byproducts markets. Prices are favorable uh, for Ukraine now, especially on sunflower meal and oil markets where Ukraine is the leader. Um, Sunflower oil from Europe is traditionally more expensive since they re-export Ukrainian oil and sell oil produced from uh, Ukrainian sunflower seeds as well. The average price for Ukrainian soybeans uh, sold last week uh, for $385 per ton, which is lower compared to other prices on a market. So taking into consideration uh, prices trends. We expect that this year Ukrainian farmers will have uh, less losses on grain and oil crops, um, and uh, especially oil crops are going to be more profitable. However, it is significantly lower compared to the pre-war level. Uh, this improvement is also due to uh, production cost reduction because of lower fertilizer application rates, reduced cost of export logistics through Black Sea port, recovery of prices in the Ukrainian market um, also were faster than previously expected, and also higher demand due to lower production. So we hope that it will help to recover uh, somehow at least a little bit um, um, and help Ukrainian production of grain and oil seeds. So now let's take a look on more long-term projection. It is expected that next year prices for main uh, grains crop will slightly decrease, but then we'll uh, have a growing trends. Um, uh, prices for oil seeds are uh, expected to continue growing. Um, the upward trend in prices for sunflower seeds is higher than for other oil seeds because uh, if Ukraine process more oil, it will be much fewer sunflower seeds on the market, which will raise prices. Um, rape seeds are also expected to rise uh, in price significantly. So, and this will kind of uh, explain the following uh, our expectations in production and yield. Uh, since the upward trend in prices and profitability for oil seeds is higher than uh, that uh, for grain, Ukrainian farmers will continue switching uh, from grain crops to oil seeds. By 2033, total harvested area of grain is projected to slowly decrease after rapid drop uh, drop in 2022 and a modest recovery in 24, uh, 25, um, 26 uh, years. Total oil seed area is expected to grow up to 11.9 million hectares. The increase will mainly be driven by deoccupation of territories 
and a gradual shift toward oil seeds production from the cereal crops. Higher profitability of oil seeds as compared to cereals combined with growth of demand for feed from the poultry sector, which significantly uh, contribute to this upward trend. The area of specific cereals also will change. The most significant changes is projected uh, for area harvested of corn from 37% uh, of the grain area in 2023 to 46% in uh, 2033. Corn will substitute wheat, area of which is projected to decline by 27% to 5.3 million hectare compared to the uh, 2023. Uh, the share of wheat in a total cereal area will decline from 47% in 2023 to 34% in um, 2033. Barley area share is expected to grow up to 16% of the grain area compared to 13% in 2023. The increase in corn area follows, among other reasons, uh, climate change adaptation. Um, compared to two decades ago, corn can now be successfully integrated into the crop rotation and cultivated in more regions of Ukraine due to expansion of warmer weather conditions to the north. Um, however, despite the growth of barley and corn area, uh, their values will not return to pre-war level due to decrease in total grain area caused by the shift toward oil seeds. So, although sunflower will partially be substituted by uh, rape seeds and soybeans, it will continue to be produced on the largest share of the total oil seed area, approximately 7.4 million hectares in 2033. By then, the share of sunflower uh, in the total oil seeds area is expected to decline from 65% in 2023 to 62%. Consequently, the share of rape seed, uh, uh, the share of rape seeds and area of, uh, under rape seeds is projected to increase from 15% to 20%. Uh, soybeans, similar to sunflower, will uh, experience a slight decrease in its area share from 20% to 18%. In absolute terms. Areas of all oil seeds are expected to grow above the pre-war level, uh, with rape seeds almost doubling in area compared to 2023, where we now see kind of declined, uh, especially in winter rape seeds. By 2033, total cereals production in Ukraine is projected to increase by 41.6% to 76.4 million tons compared to the 2023 level. This increase is attributed mainly to the growth of corn production to uh, 48.9 million tons in 2033, which results from significant expansion of the area harvested and growing yields. Um, as economy will uh, recover from the war induced shocks. Yield is expected to rise due to technology improvement, availability of better seed, seeding materials, application of advanced practices, and increase in uh, affordability of fertilizers. Of course, this assumption is made with the belief that the war will over soon, hopefully next year, maybe after American elections, who knows. Um, Along with corn, barley production will grow to 7.3 million tons plus 50% uh, compared to 2023. Such growth will result uh, primarily from increase in area and improvement in uh, of the yields. Um, compared to the changes in the area harvested of wheat, the changes in production of wheat will be less severe, uh, decreasing to 19.4 million tons in 2030, uh, minus 9.7% due to uh, the growth in yield. Those in by um, the 20, 2030s, the yield is expected to increase by uh, to uh, 5.1 million tons per hectare or by 24.4% as um, compared to the 2023 value. 
Despite the growth of total cereals production, it will not return to pre-war level, reaching only approximately 90% um, of 2021 production. Exports of cereals will follow the post-war recovery of production and grow to uh, 59.4 million tons in 2033. In particular, exports of the wheat and corn are expected to increase uh, respectively by 27.2% and 50.7%. Despite, despite the fact that production will not return to pre-war level by 2033, export volume will exceed 2021 level by 16.5% due to lower domestic demand resulting from negative population trend. Um, this growth is driven primarily by corn as it is the only crop export of which is expected to outgrow the pre-war level. The share of corn in the total Syria export quantity is projected to reach 66%, while share of uh, wheat and barley are expected to decline gradually. Um, oil seeds uh, production in Ukraine is projected to increase from 21 uh, uh, million tons in 2023 to 33.2 million tons in 2033. Production of all three major oil crops is expected to grow. Sunflower seeds up to 19.4, uh, soybeans up to 5.9, and rape seeds uh, up to 7.9 million tons. Um, the growth of production of all three crops can be attributed to increased area as farmers gradually shift from cereals toward uh, oil seeds. Um, and also, if we will have better yields, it will also elevate production. Um, sunflower seeds are expected to remain to be mostly uh, processed domestically um, uh, with uh, oil being exported rather than seeds themselves. Uh, uh, among of sunflower seed uh, exported uh, amount of sunflower seeds exported will return uh, to the pre-war level trend and remain quite low uh, uh, at the level of approximately 50,000 tons, not ex exceeding a half of percent of total production. Export quantities of rape seeds and soybeans are projected to grow following the increase in production export of rape seeds is expected to grow to 7.2 million tons and uh, of soybeans to approximately 4 million tons. So as I mentioned one more time, this uh, projection is made uh, with assumption that the war will be over next year. This is what I wanted to tell you about Ukraine. And I have a few slides uh, regarding Russian production and uh, their balances. Unfortunately, uh, uh, information about Russian production and export is getting more and more um, hided. It's hard to find. They do not post this anymore on their uh, state statistics uh, service site. Um, so it, it, it's hard to um find this information. However, uh, Russian experts uh, expect that um, grain and legumes harvest will decline. Um, today, I read that it can be even 125 million tons, including um, 82.9, some, some experts say 82.2 million tons of wheat. Um, they, uh, they also uh, reduced uh, corn harvest expect expectations to uh, 12 million tons. Um, sunflower harvest in Russia may uh, decrease from 17.3 million tons that they expected to uh, 15.45 uh, million tons in 2024. Um, the soybean harvest estimates for this year decreased from 7.2 to 6.8 million tons, um, which is um, very close to the level of 2023. And the rapeseed harvest forecast opposite is increased uh, to uh, 515, 5.2 million tons compared to uh, 4.2 uh, tons last year. 
um, so far uh, they harvested at least what they posted that they harvested 97 million tons of uh, grain and legumes including uh, 72 million tons um, of wheat and I believe they harvested already much more barley but there is no information available about that and as for now they harvested 3.7 uh, million tons of uh, sunflower seeds and 3.1 million tons of um, uh, rape seeds. With this, the export expectations are also much lower. Um, they expect around 56 uh, million tons of grain and legumes to be exported, uh, including around 44 or 45 million tons of wheat, lower than USDA expectations. But again, it was uh, data without um, uh, Ukrainian grain that was uh, harvested on occupied areas. Um, they also gonna to int they also introduced uh, embargo on a rice um, export since it's very low um, it's very low yields this year they have. Um, as I mentioned, I have um, balances of supply and demand for Russia. Uh, we can see that their uh, ending stocks are um, uh, getting lower, uh, although uh, their, uh, their uh, export was pretty high uh, last year. But since production is projected so low, um, of course, their export going to be lower and ending stocks will be lower. Um, actually, with dynamics of ending stocks in Russia, it was something weird this uh, July. Um, I believe they started harvesting earlier, or I don't know what they add, maybe Ukrainian grain here uh, that was stolen. Um, so compared to other years, even before the war and during the war, this July was on the level of usually August, some like for other months. Um, but now we can see that their ending stocks are pretty, pretty high as for um, uh, as for September, higher than uh, pre-war level. But of course, there is um, tendency to uh, decrease those ending stocks um, over time. Uh, on the oil seeds, they will have much lower ending stock this year, uh, although production kind of on the same level, but they plan to um, export more. And there is no such significant uh, differences in their ending stocks uh, compared to the uh, 22 and 23 years, but they are almost double it uh, compared to the pre-war level. So. As we can see, compared to the grain market where ending stocks kind of getting lower, um, here there's a little bit different dynamic and they have higher ending stocks compared to the pre-war levels still. So this is it. What do I have for today about Ukraine, Russia and Black Sea region? If you have any additional questions, you are welcome to ask and I will respond. Thank you so much. Antonina in the chat, Dan O'Brien put a comment that crop inputs for soybeans may be less costly and less difficult to secure logistically than for corn. Yes. Um, yes, I just thought true. I'd note that. Yes, yes, that is true. Thank you, uh, Dan, for mentioning that. Yes. Do you see the comment by Ben Potter that just came in? Um, more about what factors could lead to the war. I mean, that is not really a question. To me, <laughs> what uh, will help to end. So the question is uh, about what factors could lead to the war ending as soon as 2025. There are many factors. One of them, as I mentioned, that is um, results of American elections. And also the main is the, um, the supply and uh, military supply that Ukraine will get and all the support with, that we'll, we'll receive. Another question that uh, was actually in um, registration that was regarding, um, regarding what is the difference uh, with situation now um, 
with Russia and 90s where it was embargo introduced on grain export from Russia. So the main difference is that there is no any sanctions um, for agricultural export from Russia right now. And there is no uh, uh, sanctions on fertilizer exports from Russia. And there is no sanctions for um, oil and gas, uh, really. So that means that uh, world is continue, continuing to trade with Russia and they fill out their budget and they use those money to buy more missiles and launch another missiles attacks more and more in Ukraine and Ukrainian infrastructure, energy uh, system, etc. So as long as world will continue to make business with Russia, this war will continue. So we'll just need to be more um, strict, I believe, economically, first of all. There's a bit of a question from Don there. Uh, it's a lot of data. Can you summarize what this means for U.S. wheat and corn markets? And maybe Dan or Guy, you're both on if you have something on that too. So in my opinion, um, the situation, it, it doesn't really directly affect uh, U.S. wheat and corn market, but you are on an open market, right? And you... Um, compete with other uh, producers and um, traders and um, you will follow the price level right and if you if black sea market will shut it will directly reflect it immediately reflected on a price level and it will create some shortage on the market so the main idea that you just need to maybe to adjust your uh, policy, price policy, and also production. Uh, however, as I mentioned, there is no so much resources um, all over the world right now to compensate uh, loss of production uh, in a Black Sea region if it will be shut. Um, so that is why it's kind of also more long-term uh, thoughts um, how to ensure food security globally that uh, this kind of situation that occurs uh, in Ukraine um, will not lead to global food crisis especially in countries that are interdependent from others maybe Dan or Guy would like to add something to my thoughts Guy would you like to take the first shot at that then I'll add in Guy may not be listening. I'll go ahead. Um, I certainly agree with you, Antonina. I, I, I think early on, the first, the, sh the shocks that came to the grain markets at the uh, beginning of the Ukraine-Russia conflict, well, that was the beginning, but the but the really expansion when it came to the world's attention. Dan, we can Dan we lost you. Not sure what happened. You're still showing that you're unmuted, but it's not coming through. He maybe hit his mic. Unplug your mic and plug it back in, Dan. While he's doing that, Antonina, there is another question there. How do grain and oil seeds vary, yields vary across regions in Ukraine and by farm size? Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. You are here. Well, just with that. Uh, maybe it's just a good warning not to get too long winded. Uh, er, early on, when the what, that war started, there was a lot of a lot of uh, uh, trepidation on the world's part that that through uh, sanctions or whatever that the flow of grain coming out of Ukraine Russia would stop altogether. But then uh, the UN's actions, as well as as that of uh, of uh, of uh, Ukraine and their proactiveness have I I I think the world yes they know there's this geopolitical thing going on but but grain has still flowed and unless that conflict heats up and and we really see a stoppage I I think the world's pretty confident that hay will work it out that is that your thought are those consistent with your thoughts Antonina yeah yeah but I just yeah the most important that is prices that all this uncertainty on a black sea market impact the world prices and it's all of course will impact 
American producers as well. Yep. Yeah, and another question is uh, regarding uh, yields across regions in Ukraine. Actually, my previous presentation in May, I had a lot of maps. So if you would like to go back to Ag uh, Manager website and look at that, you would have more clear uh, uh, view of how it's different in different regions. But as for now, of course, those regions that are more close um, to um, active uh, military actions, um, they definitely have much lower yields uh, because it's complicated to uh, um, operate there and also logistics for uh, input uh, supply is also very complicated. So of course their uh, their uh, yields are lower there. Talking about smaller and bigger farm uh, farms, uh, bigger farms would have high yields because they're more financially stable and um, they can afford. Even as I mentioned today, that uh, so bigger farms uh, they cut their. Uh, fertilizer applications, but not so much as smaller farmers because they were not able to afford this. Um, so that's why for smaller farms, of course, uh, yields are much lower compared to the big farms. And I see uh, Reed just posted the link one more time to Ag Manager. So if you are willing, you can go to my previous presentation and there are many, many, many maps that I created last time um, for different uh, regions of Ukraine, how it differ, the yields and production, everything. More All questions? Right. Thanks, folks. If you still have something, go ahead. We won't take too much longer uh, unless there is something, but if you have it, now's the time to ask. You can unmute and talk to her or you can go ahead and type it in. Oh, the question is regarding the quality of grain. So um, the quality of grain in Ukraine was always pretty high. And, uh, and um, of course, uh, with the war and all this uh, situation, uh, some farmers are not able to produce, uh, uh, continue to keep this um, high quality. However, uh, from last uh, several testing, uh, so all, all grain that are going for export or domestic use, it's, when it comes to elevators, it will be tested. And according to the information I read, at least, um, it was reported that there is no much um, reduction in the quality of grain. I think that's it. Last call. Okay. Antonina? There's a comment just came in, but uh, yeah. Thanks for being on, everybody. We'll have something again sometime. We don't have it scheduled right now. We do have a, a thing with Dan O'Brien and Guy, or with Dan, I guess, uh, next week, uh, Mark Nelson and his marketing workshop on Monday is kind of our next thing. Uh, but we'll have some more with Antonina along the way, too. So thanks, Antonina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And see you next time. All right.